Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about offerings. I have had the request to talk about um, what kind of offerings I give um, and how long you leave the offerings out, you know, what an offering should be, etc. So instead of going through and talking about every um, saint, spirit, and deity that I work with, I'm just going to give you some basic ideas of really simple um, and easy to obtain offerings and some basic uh, premises and ideas around those things. So. Um, you may not work with the same saints and spirits or deities that I do, um, also that would be a really long list. So let's just start with the basic and go from there. Um, first of all, I would the, the one question I'm going to deal with first is how long do you leave the offerings out? And what I would say about that is that it really depends on what the offering is. Um, I'm taking this to mean how long would you leave it out if it's food items, right? So if you are putting food on your altar, um, it's kind of up to you, but I would say, you know, you want it to remain fresh. You're not giving them an offering that is old and stale or um, even getting rotten. So use your own discretion. Uh, these offerings should stay out from anywhere from one to three days. Three days for me is usually tops. Um, I'm comfortable with leaving some items out for up to three days, depending on what they are. Um, as far as liquids go, I mean, you can really change those out daily. Um, the way that I think of it, if you're leaving out an elaborate food offering, it's probably a special occasion kind of event that you, you have been working on um, in your spiritual practice or a special working that you've been working on. So that's kind of a, a bigger offering that you may want to leave out a little bit longer, um, you know, until the candles are completely finished or, or until you feel like the energy of that work is completely done. As far as liquids go, I usually put fresh water on my altar every day at least, if not fresh coffee or fresh alcohol. So liquids can really be changed out daily and you will see a big difference. It does make a lot of difference in your work when you have those fresh liquids on your altar. Um, <clears throat> speaking of liquids, I'm going to have a little tea here. Please excuse me, I've got a dry allergy throat today. So it is said that the spirits are always thirsty, so they always um, will take and enjoy water. So that is your very basic number one offering. And I'm going to go through a little list that I've made here and talk about some different items one by one. So black coffee is a really versatile offering. Um, that's something that I recommend that you always keep around. If you are not a coffee drinker, keep some coffee around for your spirits or your ancestors. That's the perfect offering for your ancestors, especially if you do weekly or daily work for them. Always set out some black coffee on your ancestor altar. Um, in addition to water, spring water is also a preferred offering when it comes to water. Now what I will say about that is that if you don't have access to fresh spring water, or you're not buying gallons of spring water, it's okay to use filtered water. Um, just use the freshest and purest form of water that is available to you. It's okay if you don't have the best water. Um, something that does make a difference is saying a little blessing over that water or putting a little bit of energy into that water and doing a little energy work with the water before you put it on your offering. That's especially, or on your altar, that's especially helpful um, if you don't have access to that nice spring water. Um, there aren't many spirits or deities or saints that are gonna turn down black coffee or water. So those are your, your two um, easiest offerings. Um, actually, I don't know of any that are not going to like those things. So you can pretty much use that for everybody. Um, honey is a really, one of my favorite offerings. It's a really um, common thing to obtain and it's also something that is highly preferred by a lot of spirits that I work with. The Lady of Guadalupe, for instance, loves honey. Arunla loves honey. 
Um, honey is another very versatile offering that you can give under a lot of different circumstances and in a lot of different kinds of services. That's one that I highly recommend. If you want to get a little bit more specific or a little bit more uh, elaborate with your use of honey, there are different honeys that can be good for different purposes. For instance, there is clover honey. Clover is good for money, prosperity, and abundance. You can use that in those kinds of services. Um, there's also wildflower honey. Wildflowers can be used for love magic peace, healing, love, things of that nature. So honey is one of those ingredients that you can get a little bit more in depth with. Um, now when I say you use it for those purposes, um, keep in mind what the intention behind an offering is. It is not as if some some people do it this way, so please bear with me. I'm speaking from my personal experience. I'm not telling you what's right. I'm not telling you what's best. I'm telling you what my personal experience is, what works for me, and what I personally prefer. So I am not going to be asking for something and saying, when you give it to me, I will give you this in return. That's not how I treat my friends. That's not how I treat my family members. And that is not how I would treat my relationships with spirit either. Um, I give out of the goodness of my heart <clears throat> as a sign of respect, as a sign of love, as a sign of wanting to build main, and maintain a connection, um, out of a sign of gratitude for having that connection and relationship and for everything that's been done for me in the past, everything that's been done for my clients in the past, and everything that will be done for my clients and I in the future. So when I say, you know, for you can use a specific kind of honey for a specific person per purpose, I do not mean that you're actually using it, you know, in the service per se. You are you are setting those offerings out with intent that it is an offering um, from gratitude, from respect. And I always put my offerings out before the services. I don't I don't play that game where you ask for something and then you give a reward later. That's not how I do it. Just a, a little side information there about offerings and the way that I work with them. Another really basic go-to offering to keep around is alcohol. Two big ones are rum and whiskey. Those are um, accepted by a wide variety of spirits. You know, there are um, spirits who do not prefer alcohol, and when you have a working relationship with a spirit, deity, or um, saints, you will know what their preferences are, and it will be easy to tell. For instance, I would not give alcohol to Our Lady of Guadalupe. I do not give alcohol to Ganesha. Um, those are just two that pop into my head right away. But there are a lot of saints and spirits that do prefer prefer alcohol. Um, wine is another one I didn't mention. Quite a few spirits like wine. So keeping some rum, whiskey, or wine around can be really versatile um, items to use for offerings for your ancestors as well, especially um, maybe on a special occasion or for a big service like um, Day of the Dead or something of that nature. Um, fruit. Fruit is a really great one. Um, citrus fruit is especially beloved by spirits. Some people say that they wouldn't use, um, some people say that they wouldn't use lemons. I think I've heard people say they wouldn't use lemons because it's too sour and that the point of using citrus fruit is like because the spirits are always thirsty and you want to quench their thirst. The experience that I've had is a little bit different. I don't look at it as quenching their thirst. I think that they just like the fruit. Um, it, citrus fruit is specifically known to be to create a very strong connection to spirits, um, especially ancestors, but all spirits. So that's a powerful one to use. I do use both oranges, lemons, and limes with very good results. Um, it might be a personal preference of mine. I am a little bit odd myself that I will just um, suck on lemons and limes uh, as, as some a tasty treat for myself. Um, Maybe my spirits prefer that too, I don't know. So I use all kinds of citrus fruits with very good results. Um, 
You can always share a part of your own meal, especially the first part of your meal. The first part of a home-cooked meal or a hot meal, um, take a small portion of your food and set it out for your ancestors or for your spirits, especially if you're working on something specific and you know you want to show some some um, extra gratitude or put some extra energy into that, give some extra offerings towards that. Um, putting out a piece of every every one of your meals is a really nice gesture. So you can always do that. You know, maybe you don't have a bunch of other stuff around. You can always share your meal. Uh, flowers are a really wonderful offering. Again, I don't know of any spirit, saint, or deity that is going to turn down flowers. Now, some of them may have preferences for specific flowers, or they may dislike specific flowers. Um, that would be something that you know or find out more about if you have a, a good working relationship with a spirit, saint, or deity. Flowers are wonderful offerings for your ancestors. Flowers are wonderful offerings in very many cases. Carnations are really good. I find carnations to be really good for creating spiritual connection and also for um, kind of speeding up spiritual connection or like helping to build the relationship. I find carnations to be really useful in that there's something about their energy that um, really works well, is really conducive to that. Um, Marigolds are a flower that is a traditional offering for ancestors and for spirits of the dead, especially around certain occasions like the Day of the Dead. So flowers are something that you can get more specific with as well. You can do some research and use specific flowers for specific purposes. Um, and that is a kind of a, a never-ending avenue of offering there. Of course, you don't have to buy flowers. This can be something that's readily available to you that you can go and pick wild flowers or grow them in your own garden or yard or pots on your balcony. So that's a really good um, resource to have handy. Um, in the work that I do, the candle setups themselves are considered an offering to the spirits or saints or deities. Um, especially when I'm doing an actual spiritual service, which is to be um, differentiated from spell work or root work. A spiritual service is more a prayer service. Uh, it's more of a ritual of honor and dedication to a saint. Um, when I am doing those in particular, the whole candle setup is an offering to the saint. And that does mean the, the herbs or flowers or anything that goes with those candles. It's, excuse me, it's all an offering. So that is a really nice, a nice thing to think of when you are preparing those services or when you are working with the saint. Um, if you want to get a little bit more elaborate, you can cook special meals. You know, you can learn what the different spirits, saints, and deities prefer, and you can cook special meals from for them. You can get as specific or as elaborate as you would like. I've known people who um, bake loaves of bread for their spirits on a regular basis. Bread is a really popular um, food item for an offering for ancestors, specifically or for guardian spirits. Bread is a great one to have around. Home cooked, of course, is always better. Um, offering lights or offering lamps to spirits. This is a really traditional offering. Um, offering lights can be as simple as lighting a candle for them. Light a taper candle. Um, I often use taper candles as additional offerings when I'm um, when I'm taking time out to just honor my spiritual frame or connect with my spiritual frame or spiritual family, I often light taper candles for each and every one of them, or at least the ones that I'm working really the most with at that time. Um, that's a, a candle is always a wonderful offering, and it doesn't have to be a big candle. It doesn't have to be a vigil candle. It just has to be that you are offering it with intent. Right? So a taper candle I find is really great because it usually burns for a, a, like one day, which is perfect, and it's a small size, so you can put several of them out on your altar at once. Um, really good and also easy to use offering. Um, setting of the lights um, or lamps, um, offering a lamp. 
there are a lot of different ways that you can create lamps. You can create it with oil. Um, you can create it in a piece of fruit. You can create it with alcohol. You can do a thurible offering. A thurible is an alchemical process of fire, so you can actually be offering the fire. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can uh, set lights or offer lamps to your spirits and deities. Sacred smoke. I offer smoke very regularly, and I think that it's something that is really overlooked by a lot of people. Um, as I say in some of my reporting, sacred smoke is an offering in and of itself. It communicates our intentions and carries our prayers. It greatly pleases the spirits, and it also invites their blessings. Um, it's very pleasing to spirits. So, you know, you want to keep stuff like sage, palo santo, copal. Copal is known to be really good for creating spiritual connection and for inviting benevolent spirits into your environment and inviting their blessings. So those are three really great ones. Um, frankincense, of course, is great. Um, the point is don't just look at smoke as something to use as like part of your magical practice. It's also an offering. It's an offering that is um, really greatly preferred by the spirits. So utilize that whenever you can. And of course, you can always um, customize that as much as you want. You know, incense is great for that. So that's a good one. Um, prayers. Your prayers are an offering. Don't skip out on your prayers. And don't um, underestimate the value and power of your prayers. Even a small prayer, but a, a prayer from your heart. Be sure that you're communicating respect. You're communicating um, devotion, right? Um, offer your prayers. They are an offering. Um, songs, drumming, and singing. You can sing if you want. You don't have to. Um, if you are a singer or even if you just like singing, you can sing. The spirits love it. Sing a song to them. Um, I'm not a good singer, but sometimes I sing to my spirits. Um, if the mood arises me, if the spirit strikes me. So singing is a great way to go. Um, you can also just play songs for them. You can play drumming from YouTube. There's lots of videos out there for all kinds of different songs, all kinds of different um, drumming from all around the world. Get creative, play the music that your spirits or saints, ancestors or deities prefer. Um, I think you'll really see good results from that. I always see good results from music. Um, they really enjoy it. So don't overlook the, the offering of sound. And that's about it. That's it for um, my video on offerings. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please like and comment on the videos. Please share the videos with your friends. Don't be afraid to ask me questions. If something has arisen that you would like me to elaborate on or you'd like me to explain further, go ahead and ask me. I'm happy to make a follow-up video to answer your questions. I also love taking your um, submissions for future videos. So if you have an idea for a future video, please submit those for me and I would love to look those over. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.